A rowdy rally at the state house today as the clock ticks toward a state government shutdown. State workers anxious about what will happen Friday if there's no budget and the state runs out of money and the government shuts down. It's just they don't seem to care about me or my family or the people I work with and their families. It's a, it's a lot more real than they think. I live and teach in Lewiston and um, I supported the question to ballot initiative and I still support it. It's, it passed, it's law and we need to fund our schools. That ballot initiative is the sticking point in the budget battle. A 3% surcharge on Mainers earning more than $200,000 a year. The Democrats say that's the best way to fund education. The governor and Republicans saying it'll hurt the economy. High wage earners such as doctors will leave Maine. Others won't move here. LePage taking to the radio airwaves this morning to air his frustration. If they think that putting a gun to my head that I'm going to back down, they're sorely mistaken. I call that crazy. Democratic leadership also frustrated. I mean, look, the legislature will be delivering a bill to the governor's desk. That governor will have a choice to do his job. He doesn't have to like the budget bill. He hasn't signed the last two budgets. He's vetoed them. What they want is impossible to deliver and, and without hurting our state for a decade. And they're just, they just want to break the backs of the main people, and I can't let it happen under my watch. And that was Jim Keithley reporting. During the last shutdown, it lasted about two weeks in 1991. Laid off state workers camped out at Capitol Park, and today some of them had a barbecue lunch there, knowing full well come Friday they may be camping out there again. A bill that restores the tip credit in Maine signed into law by Governor LePage. The law alters the pay structure for restaurant workers who see this as a victory. They say it's a win for the industry and a sigh of relief for workers from the, from the owners to the employees. The front of the house, the wait staff, the bartenders, they all make what they make in uh, tips and the, and the wage and they're happy also. What it, what it allows us to do is pay people in the kitchen more money. Restaurant owners say they can now pay their workers less than minimum wage if they make up the difference in tips. Crews rush to the scene as flames consume a house in Casco. It was reported at about 1 o'clock on Lilac Lane. Firefighters arriving to find thick smoke and flames coming out from the home. Four people were inside the house at the time. All of them did get out safely. However, the homeowner's father-in-law, who is wheelchair bound and is on oxygen, barely made it out in time. My father-in-law was hollering and he's sitting there with flames like up to the arm of his chair and trying to hit it with a blanket. And he's going, you got to help me put this out. And I'm like, no, no. No, because there's no time to put this out now. We need to get out of here. While crews from Naples, Casco, Wyndham, and Raymond all brought in to fight the flames, officials say that the fire started on the first floor, but the cause remains under investigation. A state trooper stopping a wrong way driver on the turnpike. It happened on the southbound side around 10 o'clock last night in Sabatis. The trooper pulling aside that car and forcing it into the guardrail. The driver, 76 year old Stephen Burns of Augusta, told police he was confused. He was not hurt. That trooper had bumps and bruises. Officials plan to review Burns license status. Police charge a woman with drunk driving after she slams into a memorial in Freiburg around midnight Friday. Investigators say Diane Beausoleil hit the John Stevens Memorial, shifting it about three inches off of its base. She was treated for non-life-threatening injuries. She has been charged with OUI and reckless conduct. Officials believe the 28-ton granite monument is still stable, and they're getting estimates on the damage. Well, new at 6, police are warning people in Lincoln County to watch out for aggressive animals. This after a raccoon tests positive for rabies. The raccoon had attacked two dogs in a field off of Nobleboro Road in Bremen on Saturday. Officials say that they learned of the rabies diagnosis from the Maine CDC on Monday. Organizers behind a plan to get Saddleback Mountain up and running again are announcing a historic deal. A news conference to unveil the details is set for 10 o'clock Wednesday morning at the lodge in Rangeley. We plan on having a crew there and we'll bring you the story as soon as it happens on our mobile app and at WMTW.com. And still to come, students teaching teachers the new technology designed to open new possibilities in classrooms across the state. And catch of the day, the mystery of how a rifle gets into the Kennebec River before being found by fishermen in Augusta. 
And as we go to the break, we're looking at the evening forecast in Standish, where the threat of a shower, maybe even a thunderstorm, can't be ruled out, taking you through midnight temperatures in the 50s. Total look at the forecast. We're talking muggies here by the weekend. All the details coming up right after the break. This is Channel 8 WMTW, Maine's total weather and news, live with Megan Torgerson, Steve Minnick, breaking news anchor Tracy Sable, sports director Travis Lee, and chief meteorologist Roger Griswold. Maine's total weather and news at 6 continues. Gray skies, some gusty winds, raindrops, and uh, even some rumbles of thunder. Pictures coming to us from Westbrook, where showers and thunderstorms came through the area during the afternoon hours. I can't say there won't be another round because we're watching the radar and there's activity popping up off to our west. Also north of Portland, here's a good slug of rain that extends from Augusta to Waterville up to Skowhegan and points beyond. But the, although it looks very impressive on the radar, if we look at the 3D volume scan, we see that the height of the thunderstorm activity, and there may not be a whole lot of thunderstorm activity embedded in this, is only running about 20,000 feet. Now, strong thunderstorms here in northern New England tend to push up closer to 40 to even 45,000 feet. So you can see these are half the height. Doesn't mean there won't be a thunderstorm, but for now, uh, we're not overly concerned about the severe weather threat, at least from that area. Now here's another area of Nobleboro. This one's pushing up toward Jefferson, North Waldeboro. Waldeb that is going to produce a whole lot of lightning, some torrential downpours and gusty winds as it comes ashore. Another one which I'm picking up on the radar off the coast between Booth Bay and Monhegan is also sliding toward the coast. Places from Port Clyde to Rockland probably going to deal with that one. Another one over York County. We've got some showers and thunderstorms from Lymington uh, back across New Hampshire, New Durham here. This one has got some potential strong storms. Of course, the farther south you are, the more conducive the atmosphere is for stronger storms to develop. So a lot of the strongest storms we're likely to see are going to be in this general area. You can see them sliding in our direction. So the threat for showers, the threat for thunderstorms, yeah, that stays in the forecast right through the evening hours. You can see a cluster out here with some severe thunderstorm warnings earlier that have now been discontinued. Temperatures, interesting because it's only 60 degrees. Upper 50s, Lewiston, Auburn, Freiburg at 62, Berlin, New Hampshire right now at 66. So we don't have to be 85 to 90 to get showers and thunderstorms developing. And we also don't have to be muggy. Look at the dew point values. This is a, a relatively dry air mass. I mean, despite the rain drops that might be coming through it, humidity levels were low today. That is going to change later on in the week. We've got a couple of uh, less humid days, but then the muggies come back in on Friday. Tomorrow looks to be a decent day. We'll see a fair amount of sunshine. I think the chance for a shower is in the forecast, but probably not as widespread. So many folks who got rain this afternoon probably won't get it tomorrow. You can see some scattered showers out there and we top out at 75 degrees. Now on Thursday, late day showers are expected and we'll begin to see the humidity start to push in our direction. For the time being though, these dew points stay in the 50s, so no humidity to speak of. But by the time Thursday arrives, now you can see it's just on our doorstep and this muggy air will push back in here. You're going to notice it as soon as Friday. Once it arrives, it looks as though it's likely to stick around right through the weekend with temperatures close to 80 degrees. You know, early thoughts on the 4th of July, it's still a long way off, but the pattern looks very summery. Record high temperature for the 4th is 90 degrees. The coldest high temperature 57 and our average high is in the 70s. That's what we're looking at temperatures in the 70s. My forecast for tonight, evening showers, a thunderstorm is possible with a southerly breeze. Tomorrow it's sun and clouds, a comfortable day. We'll get up to about 75 degrees. Here's another check of the eight day forecast. I know a lot of folks making it a four day weekend, Saturday, Sunday, Monday, and the holiday Tuesday. Weather looks good for Boy, the 4th like of July. Look of all those suns, especially yeah. for that holiday weekend. That's great. A little on the muggy side, but muggy and 80 is a whole lot different than muggy and 90, and it's not looking to be the muggy 90s. Very okay, good, great. Roger. Thank you. We'll take a look at this. A day on the Kennebec River for a man and his son Sunday leads to an interesting catch. Augusta police say the two recovered this rusted Remington Model 700 rifle when they were fishing near the end of Canal Street. Police say it has not been reported stolen, but they are still investigating if it is linked to any crimes. There were no rounds in the chamber.
College students from USM teaching public school teachers about cutting edge technology in Portland today. Educators getting a crash course on the use of 3D printers in the classroom. The teachers getting the chance to print out their own objects and hands on instructions and how to use the device as a tool in the classroom. The class is part of Side by Side and the Summer Arts Institute, which is now in its third year and designed to open up new possibilities. The sky's the limit. And what it does in a lot of cases is it puts the students in the driver's seat of deciding what do they want to print. They get to be the designers and it's something that they physically hold in their hand when they're done. The partnership between USM and the Portland Public School District is funded by a $2 million Department of Education grant. We're talking round ball next in sports. And Travis, how bad at the trade winds could be blowing for the Celtics this week? Yeah, a lot of reports. The Celtics trying to do some major wheeling and dealing. We'll let you know about it next in sports. And with an ECHL hockey team coming to Portland in two years, what can we expect from that league? We'll catch up with two Mainers who played in the ECHL for a scouting report. That's sports. Come on.